Diary 2021. The days are getting shorter. Am I losing my mind? Or are they losing their minds? Or are we all losing our... Oh my God. I was supposed to do the... Hey, welcome to Smartless. Smart. Smart. Listener, uh, Sean's got a walking boot He's on. He's got a booty. He's got a booty. Now I got a foot boot. Oh, Sean, you've been saying for a while you wanted to get some booty, and that is just great. <laughs> I got a foot uh, boot on because what happened? I, you know, I don't have to wear it, but the doctor said if you want to heal fast, you should wear it. I have a tiny, tiny, tiny torn thing in my third toe on my right foot. I think what, what we're really looking for is how did we hurt the toe? I don't know. Hang on, well, wait a second. I'll bet you Working do. out maybe a little bit. Let's Working out pause too for one fucking second. That entire boot that goes halfway up your leg is because you have a tiny torn thing it's in for your one little third piggy. toe. Yeah, because why I is that can't. the one that didn't go to market? What happened? <laughs> mm -hmm. It refused to go to market. Uh, yeah, yeah. What happened, Sean? What happened to the toe? No, I don't know. I swear to God, no, no. It, you know, you know when you walk and you uh -huh. your, your front part or the ball of your foot turns up. I was sure. doing it too much. I guess I walk too much. Oh, oh is that what it so is? So you've got an exercise injury. Is that what yeah, it is from yeah. walking? Uh. -uh. If anyone would have an exercise injury, it's the it's the tight silhouette of Will Arnett. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. You know, when Jason was, uh, you both were out at, at the house recently when, when we were all on the East Coast, and um, Jason got to see you firsthand. I don't think he believed me that I, that I worked that hard because he's kind of the guy who runs six miles every day, and we know that he's the guy who puts the road work in. Mm -hmm. And then he got to see firsthand that I'm actually doing it, right, Jay? Yeah, well... I mean, <laughs> here's what it is. Oh boy. Okay. There's a base. I'm trying to fucking cue you up to compliment me. No, I'm done with it. Now we're going to switch it. We're going to balance it right now. Listener, there's a basement room uh, in Will Arnett's fabulous mm -hmm. second summer home because of your kind listening. It's my first summer home, but it's my second home. Yeah. Your kind listening has given him the the, the means to provide. Not so, true. Um, I've had it before. I've had it that's for years. True. All right. So now you're working on a third, right? Let's let them know how rich you are, Will. They love that. Yeah. God, shut up. <laughs> trying to be you, relatable. So he's got a basement <laughs> slash gym uh, in the bottom of the house, and it's all white. Yeah. yeah, there's some wood panel walls, but it's it's white. He's First of all, that's not true. There's the the floor is leather. That's true. Let me get to the white part. The white part is the standing punching bag. Okay, it's real, real oh, right. white. I it's saw that. hot white. It's and yeah. and what the, the 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 biggest violation are the white boxing gloves yeah. and the white <laughs> tennis shoes that are down there just for the boxing sessions. So he's getting he's getting skinny while doing it in Miami style, I suppose. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> I Jason, when I was there, Will showed me that too, and he actually demonstrated. So I had to stand there oh, and watch him Christ. box for a little bit. Yeah. But it was impressive. Thank you. Yeah. But then this is what I like. Jason FaceTimed me from that same gym w running on the treadmill. Running on the treadmill. That's true. Yeah. Jason, when I got down there, like I said, the floor is leather. I don't get in. I don't want to get into the whole thing. Oh, you've got an Italian leather floor. But the point is, <laughs> when I came down. Is it down, really leather? Sure. Every time I come down there, uh, would come down there, Jason would be running. It would be a spray. Like somebody had just, uh, the, the, you yeah. know, had, had put pressure on the end of a garden hose and just sprayed the amount of sweat that was surrounding. Yeah. The you sweat a lot. Yeah. Well, and then what did I do? I take my towel. You did and it. I mop it all up. I wipe down the machine like uh, like a guy who spent some time in a public gym. You know, yeah. it's just courteous. <laughs> hey, Wait. listen, mystery guests, you can't participate yet. God damn it. Okay, did let's get to it because he's laughing. Did you I'm still on the thing that everything is white. Oh, oh God. okay. okay no, wait, wait, wait. Let's guess. Let's don't, guess don't, right don't there really off of that. Um, oh, God. He's an actor. He's an actor's actor. He's from Michigan. Well, he yelled. He yelled. He's I comedic. I can, Wait, he's, he's from Michigan. He still, he still lives there. He made his film debut in Ragtime, and instead of listing his credits, because <gasps> one of my favorite him, movies, you're going to guess who it is. Let's ask him about his credits. It's the incredibly gifted and talented, one of my personal all-time favorite actors of all, all time, one of the good guys. It's Jeff Daniels. Hello, how Jeff are we? Jeff Daniels. Fantastic. Whoa, wow. Wow. <laughs> That's a booking, Jeff everybody. Daniels. Let me ask you about the punching bag. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, a good workout, but... 
psychologically, emotionally, are we dealing with some shit when we're doing yeah. that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. First of all, yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes, I have a lot of issues <laughs> that I'm trying to work out right now. Sure. Jeff Daniels, thank you for being on today. Um, I really am such a gigantic fan, as I'm sure I can speak for same all of here. us. Gigantic oh, fan. Same. Now, oh, that's nice. Thank you. You live in Michigan. Not that Michigan isn't awesome. One of my best friends lived there. Uh, well, you know, Raina. She lives in Lakeside, Michigan. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, but it's but, it's unusual yeah. for actors to live there, right? You hear this all the time. Why Michigan? And why didn't you ever want to leave? Uh, I did leave. I uh, left for about 10 years. Uh, New York City. Great research, Sean. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and Kathleen, my wife, my wife is from there. We're from the same town. And oh, that's nice. We were in New York City for 10 years. We had a two-year-old boy. Uh, I had about three or four movies at that point. But had no faith that the career would last whatsoever. They don't, right? No. Nope. Um, so I didn't want to be somewhere where I'd get the phone call that you're over. Right. Mm -hmm. And and I had heard that. My agent had said that once. I said, you know, somebody is going to be in the... Do you think uh, so-and-so is a good actor? He goes, no, no, he's over. <laughs> so wow. I've been told more than once by one of my reps that, you know, that let's start thinking about something else. I've seen people tell you that after a take. Yeah. <laughs> that's true and i and i've whispered it to myself in the mirror a few times sure. um jeff sorry sure. continue yeah, please. no and that so you know being fatalistic i went back to i went back to michigan we we built a house and and uh for a lot less money than la or new york yeah. and and had another kid and kind of used the detroit airport to commute yeah which mm -hmm. was unusual but I just, uh, I didn't know how to raise my kids in L.A. or in Hollywood specifically. Mm -hmm. You know, the joke is I just didn't want them to grow up going to Sly Stallone's house for an Easter egg hunt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why not? I didn't, I, I didn't know how, how to, you know, pull them out of that. So yeah. uh, I said, why don't we just go home? And so when the career's over, I uh, can go, oh, okay, and I'll hang up and I'll already be home. Yeah, that was the long-term plan. Hey, Jeff, tell the kids the fucking the Easter Bunny's fucking late today. <laughs> <laughs> the worst one. You know, ever. there's this thing that I heard a long time ago. I might not be getting this right, but somebody told me this. That this is an actor's career summed up. You may have heard this. I'll use my name, for example. Who is Sean Hayes? Get me Sean Hayes. Get me a Sean Hayes type. Who is Sean Hayes? Yeah. That's the trajectory of sure. an actor's career. Yeah. Is there a young Sean Hayes in there too? Because that happens. Too. Sure, yeah, that happens too. Well, him, but younger. But Jeff, you have always been uh, a couple of steps ahead uh, in your in your in your choices, in your perception of things. In yeah. I mean, you're just you've been a pro for so long. Uh, it's it's. And I, I mean, wonder if not uh, sort of being able to step back to go and work, and then be able to not not live in this. I also didn't want my kids to grow up in, in Hollywood, which is why I moved to Beverly Hills. But the point is, <laughs> I think that maybe was there, was, but do you get to have that it's kind Hamptons of- Hamptons for the summer, though. Uh, Hampton, uh, and Hamptons for the summer. Yeah, right. I'm not an animal, Jason. Yeah, got but it. Do, you, do you have, <laughs> but do you, do you do you get to have that kind of race? We, we, we had a, a Formula One driver, Daniel Ricardo, on, and, and he talked about like needing to take that step back and get that perspective. And do you feel like staying, being in Michigan, you get to have- more perspective and that helps you do what you do does that kind of recharge your batteries a little bit a couple things yeah it it uh the recharge happens uh you know you the the movie or the tv show ends and you're still in that town and other people are working just not you that that would have been harder uh when i did have like time off back in michigan and then i would get a job and you're going to shoot at warner brothers You'd walk on Warner Brothers, and it's exciting. Yeah. And that enthusiasm mm -hmm. that you had as a kid for not making a film, but for making a movie. Right. I'm mm -hmm. making movies. And it, brought, it, kept, it kept that kind of wonderment of uh, when I first got into the business of, you know, you go to soundstage, whatever, and there's a plaque that says Streetcar Named Desire was yeah. shot in, yeah. in this one. And that, I get off on stuff like that. So it brought all that back. Um, it also made me different. Jack Lemon, I saw him, you know, we ran into him and I asked him about acting and all. He goes, you got to be different, kid. You got to be different than the other 25 guys sitting outside that door. 
right? Yeah. Michigan made me different. That's cool. And where does it all sit for you today as far as your 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 passion and your investment in uh you know emotional investment into the the future cuz you've done it. I mean, you've got the gold medal for longevity, you've got the gold medal for quality, you've got the gold medal for providing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So do you find yourself in a place of uh, sort of that that thing that uh, Will's tired of hearing me say that sort of that sexy indifference that allows for you to be really hireable uh, because they can smell this kind of well he doesn't need it he's done it um, where how does it all sit for you now what do you what do you want to do uh, that that's the question and that's you know I've often you know and you guys know, when do you when when do you know you've made it. Yeah. Is it money? Is it is it roles? Is it an Oscar? Is it what is it? Mm-hmm. And I've never been able to answer that. And one of those things was that question when my agent, you know, I said, "Well, I'm, you know, I got what's next year? I'm looking at next year." He goes, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some things, but what do you want to do?" Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I've never been in a position to do that. Not until newsroom, and then. A string in a mat. I mean, Newsroom bought me 10 years. You were so amazing Not in that even, show. But wait, 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 wait. Not even Dumb and Dumber. Dumb and Dumber didn't give you that position. I, I would have thought that you've always been in that position because you seem like, maybe this is a testament to what a great actor you are. You seem like you sort of, the roles that you that you play and, and, and the, the stuff that you do is... Kind of feels like it. It feels like it's by design. Yeah, because because like to Will's point, terms of endearment, something wild, Purple Rose of Cairo, you know, Newsroom, uh, Gettysburg, like all these things that you've done, which are just mind blowing. And then you have Dumb and Dumber, which to me was one of the smartest moves you could ever make because it showed immediately. See what you did there, Sean, with the title yeah. and everything. That's yeah. a fucking classic. Actually, you know what, Sean, you just mentioned the one. So. I mean, Jeff, we met, I don't know if you remember, a few years ago, we, we both, I, I was on there for a couple of weeks. RV. An RV with, with, um, yeah. w- with Robin and, and that whole gang and, and uh, yeah. our, our buddy Barry Sonnenfeld. And yeah. uh, I remember I kept thinking like, I, I don't want to, don't talk to uh, Jeff Daniels too much. Don't, uh, <laughs> don't tell him how much you love something wild. Because for me, that movie. And you didn't. <laughs> and I, I did. I didn't, and I just pretend I had because Jason just kept saying "sexy indifference, sexy indifference." So I was posing a lot. And I was p- pursing my lips like I didn't care. But, but I, I will say I want to get to something wild. Something wild was the first movie I I ever owned, and I'll tell you why. I rented it and I forgot to give it back to the uh, video <laughs> store. This is a true story. This These is are the way ab- the compliments come from Will. This is, a, this is an absolutely true story. And I've watched that movie. Not only have I watched it dozens and dozens of times, there's something I reference it all the time um, because I love that character you played. You know, you've, I've seen versions of it before, but this guy who's got this secret and you take it throughout the whole film. And you're really funny and you seem like you're really hapless and whatever. And then it turns out there's like this whole other twist to it. And this guy's got this burn. He's got this thing burning in him. And I've always used that as a touchstone of, of a character who's got something else going on. I just, I, there's something about it that I love, just love. I don't, I don't mean to embarrass you, Jeff, but I, I just love that film so much. Was that a big experience for you making that movie? It was great because of Jonathan Demme. Um, I mean, you guys do improv. Brilliantly. I, I've never taken an improv class in my life. And Jonathan used the script as an outline, and that was the first movie where, yeah, don't worry what what they wrote. Here's what you're, you know, say this, say this, try that, go. No way. And that was a new territory for me. Mm-hmm. Um, so you got the freedom, as you know, from improv to kind of go. Um, but I never, the secret thing is that sometimes uh, actors will, will, will hide it a little bit. Maybe a lot, but not completely. Mm. And I think I, I if I look, if remember, I, I just completely ignored the fact that there's this secret that I'm going to get to uh, later. Because I went into that movie going, uh, the two guys I had grown up with idolizing, or at least got me interested in acting, were Dick Van Dyke and Jack Lemmon. Mm. There were two of them. But they were the guys who could do comedy. Alan Arkin was another one. Alan is so, you know, understated and all that. Mm-hmm. But these guys, you know, like in in-laws with Peter Falk, those guys, they could go big comedically and not get caught. Yeah. And and so that's Jack Lemon and Dick Van Dyke had a baby 
and its name was Charlie Driggs in something wild. Mm. That was, I'm going to do what they would do, and then I just rode that into that secret. But you you had that, there, there's a scene in the, if you remember, there's a scene in the coffee shop at the motel where Ray Liotta comes, Ray, Ray Liotta at his menacingly best. Um, first but, movie. First first movie. Oh, so there wow. you go. First I mean, movie. He was so scary. I bet he was scary even just doing the scenes with He was so good. But you you have this scene where you kind of, there's a cop in the diner there, and and you know that he can't do anything because the cop's there. Oh, yeah. So you've got, like, the freedom. And there's something, again, about the way you played that scene. I was like, this is the way you do a scene. Like, I, I thought, like, if I taught a film class, I'd go, this is how you do a scene. <laughs> and that dynamic and that chemistry and that thing that and those instincts that you had, uh, for me, I, again, not to embarrass you, I've just always taken with me. It's a w- strange thing, but it's true. You don't you don't teach? Well, I should. Uh, this is a good point. <laughs> yeah, I sh- it's a really good point, Sean. <laughs> and I'm gonna I'm gonna put my number up in the chat after if anybody wants to. <laughs> you could use it, Sean. Um, I could. That is a that's a movie that uh, uh, one one of my heroes, Paul Thomas Anderson, talks a lot about, and uh, I I've, I've uh, scolded myself for having never seen it yet. But after this talk, I, I've got even more impetus to see it. So um, Jonathan Demme would would if you gave him ten grand to make a movie or a hundred million. He'd have the same enthusiasm at six in the morning, same thing. Yeah. And he never met an idea that he wouldn't give it a shot. Yeah, try it. Go. Wow. Wow. Yes. Right. I mean, anything. Any. He was so encouraging. Uh, others have been so, but no one more so than Jonathan Demme was. He was a pleasure to work with. Mm-hmm. And we will be right back. We get support from Wondrium. If you're like us, then you're probably tired of mindlessly watching and scrolling. You want something new and exciting. That's why we've been loving Wondrium. That's W-O-N-D-R-I-U-M. It's the streaming service that our brains can't get enough of. There's so much to explore. Wondrium offers endless opportunities to learn something new with thousands of hours of video and audio content, fascinating documentaries, helpful how-tos, and answers to every question you've ever had. And if you're familiar with the Great Courses Plus, like I am, then you already know Wondrium. It's the same great service, just bigger and better. Scotty and I have been having so much fun watching a couple of them, Mind Blowing Science I've been watching. It's called Mind Blowing Science. It's really, really cool for the sci-fi nerd in you. And uh, Scotty, because he has a problem uh, communicating in our relationship, the brain-based guide to communicating better. But don't tell him I said that. We know you'll love Wondrium, so we put together a special offer for our listeners, a free month trial of unlimited access. Just go to our special URL, wondrium.com slash smartlist. That's W-O-N-D-R-I-U-M dot com slash S-M-A-R-T-L-E-S-S. Think of how much you'll learn in a month. Go to wondrium.com slash smartlist. Smartless gets support from HelloFresh. You know, fall is a very busy time, Will, but HelloFresh recipes save time you'd otherwise spend meal planning, shopping, and chopping so you can get back to what matters. Yeah, w- with HelloFresh, and this is what I love, you get fresh pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. HelloFresh's family-friendly menu is a big win for back-to-school season with easy, delicious recipes for drama-free dinners. Oh, I love a drama-free dinner. Right. Although sometimes I do like a dinner that's filled with drama. Yeah, just like a food fight or something. Well, just the sound of, you know, the clattering of utensils hitting the plate, Mm -hmm. you know, like a silence, and then that, and then that's very dramatic. Dramatic, yeah. But HelloFresh, here's the, what they do is you can choose from 50 menu and market items every week from vegetarian meals and calories smart choices to extra special gourmet options. And there's something for everyone to enjoy with recipes designed and tested by professional chefs and nutritional experts to ensure deliciousness and simplicity, Sean. You know, we get into this pattern of cooking the same things because it's all we know. You know, I know a lot of people are like that where you just, your go-to recipes. In a salad sandwich, white bread, potato chips on the side. Yeah, that's that's one of my three recipes. Or (laughs) Or as we like to call it, the Sean and Scotty. That's right. I could make that every day of my life, but you get tired of it, right? So yeah. the great thing about HelloFresh is it's all this variety, all these opportunities to uh, create all these new recipes that you didn't know you were able to do. And it makes, because it makes it so easy. It's great. Well, listen, go to HelloFresh.com slash SmartList14 and use code SmartList14 for up to 14 free meals, including free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash SmartList14. Promo code SMARTLESS14 for up to 14 free meals and free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. 
Smartless is brought to you in part by Tonal. I just want to say I just got my Tonal. I can't stop using it. It's fantastic. And I know Bennett and Rob just got theirs, and that's all they talk about. They're completely obsessed with it. They're obsessed. Bennett, first of all, he's become addicted to Tonal. He's doing like four or five days a week. With Tonal, it's kind of like you walk into a gym. It's like all that equipment in one. Yeah. Like you get all this stuff and you get access to trainers and you get access to all these different uh, workout devices that work out every part of your body. It's amazing because I, I also have to agree with you. Yeah. He looks pretty darn good. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm getting confused. Wait, Sean, are you saying that Bennett looks so good he's making you straight? Yeah. <laughs> Tonal is the smart home gym that knows your limits, then pushes them higher. The patented digital weight system senses your strength and adjusts the weight automatically in real time so you can get the most out of every workout. Tonal tailors the weight for every move so each rep is efficient and effective. Over time, it learns from your body and automatically increases the weight exactly when you can handle it. No matter your experience level, Tonal has thousands of personalized workouts from strength training to HIT, yoga, boot camp, bar, and more that help you unlock your strongest self. Professional installers will deliver and mount your Tonal safely and quickly so you can spend your energy working out. Plus, Tonal offers a three-year limited warranty. Oh, they got professional installers. Yeah. Oh, that's a bummer. You know why? Why? Why I wanted to go and install them in people's houses. That's okay. You don't have to. They have professional installers. Where, where, where I should put your Tonal? Don't, don't, don't. You take it off your plate. No, seriously, you need to see this thing. It's like having an entire gym hanging on your wall. It can do everything for you. Any kind of exercise you want, it's got it in there. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, I love the sort of the all-in-one nature of it, that it's yeah. just everything in one machine. Yeah, you don't need to go so to the good. gym anymore. Try Tonal, the smartest home gym for 30 days in your home. Tonal is so confident that you'll love it, they offer a full money-back guarantee. You can now get Tonal from $63 per month and 0% interest over 48 months. Visit www.tonal.com. And for a limited time, get 100 bucks off when you use promo code SMARTLESS at checkout. That's www.tonal.com, promo code SMARTLESS. Tonal, be your strongest. And now back to the show. One of my favorite movies, uh, like top five, is Ragtime. Um, I, 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 I tell, tell me, tell me about that. Tell me about working with Milos Forman. Uh, Ragtime was the first movie. It was um, my agent had been an agent at ICM for about a week. Yeah. Hmm. He inherited a client list of which I was on it. One of the people on it. <laughs> he recently was the casting director for Ragtime. Mm -hmm. So Paul Martino was, he knew Milos, and he said, Milos, uh, you know, yeah, I've started a job, and I got an actor I want you to see, put him in the movie. And so Milos, it was perfunctory. I went over and met Milos, she goes, yeah, okay, and said hello and looked at me and said, okay, right, you can play this part, get out of here. That was it, and yeah. it, I got it because of Paul. Wow. The thrill of ragtime was Cagney, working yeah. with Jimmy Cagney. That was his last film, wasn't it? It was, and and the story, he didn't want to do it. He was living upstate New York. He was 81 going on 101. He, <laughs> he wanted a screen test and to prove to himself that he could do it. Wow. Milos really wanted him. So uh, this is 80, 81. They rented a, a studio at Channel 13 in New York City. And WNET, and we went down there, and he got a bunch of the other actors that were in this one scene with the police commissioner, which was Cagney. Yeah. They got Kenny McMillan, who's passed away. He was amazing. He was a bulldozer, fire plug of a, you know, angry yeah. actor that could just go. I mean, he was just an open vein. The racist fire chief. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then he added, I think Howard Rollins was there, and then three or four of us other cops who were just, you know, to fill out the room and. I don't know why, but I, we didn't say anything. But I got to go. Yeah. So you're sitting in there, and there's not there's like one camera and a black and white monitor up on a wall. That's mm -hmm. where you could see what the camera saw. No video village, right. just that, black and white. In comes Cagney, drove down. Here mm -hmm. he comes. A nurse is helping him in <laughs> on a walker. Sound familiar? On well? a walker. <laughs> <laughs> Puts... Puts the walker down, sits in the chair. It's a three-page scene. He can't do it. He can't remember the next line. He yeah. can't. He turns the page. It's Aww. 10 seconds. It's bad. Again, Milos well. goes, all right, all right, all right, don't worry about it. Let's do, let's do the one page. Let's do the one. And he puts the one page down. There are three lines. Can't do it. 
It's all right, let's do, do, do the one, the one line. You do the one line. You read that line. Cagney went over it, went over it, went over it. And then he looked up and he looked at Kenny McMillan and you could see it on the black and white TV monitor. There it was, that thing yeah. that only guys like Cagney have. The only other guys I've seen that have it that I've been on a set with were Clint and Jack Nicholson. That thing where the camera goes and they become that thing mm -hmm. and yeah. then they come out of it. They make eye contact and the presence is there and yeah. Yeah, or just you can see all the movies he's ever done are are right there again. He's just old. And yeah. that, he we cut after that one line, and Milo said, perfect, you got it, we're going to be, and he shot it <laughs> line to line. Just for, for Tracy, Milo Foreman, he directed One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, Ragtime, Amadeus, Man on the Moon, all these huge movies. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's, he's a great, a great beautiful director. director. I'm so jealous you got to work with him. Amadeus is my favorite movie. Uh, can we go to newsroom? Can can you? Yeah, uh, sure. Can can you? Now, uh, I, I think uh, everyone except Tracy has probably heard uh, the uh, the stories about Aaron Sorkin and his um, his incredible you know writing, um, but but in sometimes his uh, his uh, intransigence when it comes to uh, actors uh, making the lines their own. Uh, can can you speak to any of that without risking any sort of career suicide? <laughs> No, not at all. It's it's very it's very clear. It is very clear what the rules are, which is don't change a word. Like mm -hmm. I, I've heard, you can't change um to uh. Correct. Huh? How did you like that? Uh, it's um. It's actually um. Yeah, it's um, um. Yeah, it's I had come out of the theater, so in New York, where it was, that's the way it was in the theater. It was whether it was Lanford Wilson in my case off Broadway. Uh, you go ask if you want to change one of the words. And uh -huh. so that was just the rule. And so your job was to make the writing work. And if they didn't, it didn't work, they'd rewrite it or they'd redo you or something. But that was the deal. But in the interest of trying to make lines sound like they are coming out of thought, one sometimes, you know, like I'm doing right now, you sort of, you, 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 you break them up, you mess them up. Oh, you're acting right now? No, but you know what I mean? Like there's like, it, there's things that sound natural that a writer might not write because it is a lot of ellipses and a so lot of words. So it sounds authentic, words. right? Exactly. And yeah, are but you his, saying that- I'm sure his defense would be like, I know that's what makes me good at what I do is that I understand that. And, and there's the, also the, the sort of underlying that is that I understand better than you. Well, uh, but there's the separation between what is writing and what is acting. And I guess my question is, how much is he tolerant of the merging of those two things? You have to marry yourself to the rhythm of the writing, mm. the melody of Sorkin. You, right. That there is a melody and it's, it's, I call it like riding secretariat. You get on it and you ride it. Right, like a mammoth or even a Shakespeare. Like it's just, it's Or your, Neil Simon was yeah. the same way. Yeah. Don't yeah, change yeah. it. Don't change yeah. your word. And you guys know from comedy, you take one word out, it's not funny. Yeah. I did um, Promises, Promises on Broadway, uh, this musical, and Neil would come to rehearsals and rewrite with me on the spot. It was crazy. Wow. And I was like, yeah. oh my God, Neil Simon's rewriting words. I've never worried about the fact that that I, I get what Jason's saying completely, and I'm not advocating for one way or the other. I was, I'm just curious about how what the process. No, I know, was. I know. But here's here's the deal: like Patty Chayefsky and Network, for example. Yeah. When 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 uh, uh, William Holden and Faye Dunaway are going at each other in that room, there are three people in that room, and one of them is Patty Chayefsky. Mm -hmm. And you know it, and you can feel it, and you can hear his voice. And yeah. that's that's where Sorkin's coming from. He is in every scene. And so my job is to make it sound as thoughtful and as falling out of my head for the first time as possible. But at the end of the day, if it also feels written, we like that. Right. There was some. Mm -hmm. There's someone driving the bus. And so yeah. you marry yourself to that as an actor and you do your best job to make it as real as possible. Got it. But, you know, yeah. Jason, we talk about this sometimes. There's that kind of, look, at the end of the day also, and maybe this is more prevalent now, it's, it is it is much more a collaborative experience on set. I think that, I, I don't know if all you guys can uh, uh, attest to that, but certainly... You know, th there are moments where, for instance, you know, Jimmy Burroughs, the great TV director who Sean and I uh, had the, mm -hmm. you know, honor to work with. And Jason's known forever and ever and ever. Uh, and Jason, did you guys ever do it? Do you and Jimmy ever? Yeah, yeah. Bunch of stuff, actually. Oh, he yeah, did you the, did it. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. 
So uh, uh, I remember one time Sean and I were doing a show with Jimmy, and um, I remember I came, I got to walk in and deliver a line, and then there, and then like take a drink or something. So I come in and I say the line, and then I take the drink. And as we're walking away to the next set to uh, to go rehearse on the next set, he says, uh, "Willie, say half the line, take the drink, and then say the other thing on the other side." And I was like, "Okay," and I try it, and it was like. 24% funnier. Yeah. <laughs> and, isn't, that, isn't that amazing? And, and I kind of was like, huh. Yeah. I just walked away. I was like, he was so fucking right, you know? Yeah. yeah. I love that. Yeah, the, the, the good one, Jim Brooks is another guy like that. I mean, they just know. Yep. They just know. Mm. But they got to see it. They got to see you do it. Yeah. And so yeah. that's kind of what I, I go, you want to see the words you wrote? Here they are. Boom. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of how I go into it. With all your experience, all your set exposure, set experience, uh, understanding of process, blah, 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 all that stuff, do, has it ever drawn you towards uh, uh, wanting to utilize all that uh, uh, by, by jumping in the director chair? Uh, you have, right, Jason? Yeah. You, lo you love it. I, I, I like, can't stand it. Can't Oh, really? God, I cannot <laughs> really? get enough of it. I can't stand it. Why? Because yeah. because the questions, yeah. the constant questions, yeah. the coming up and going, is it the red sweater or the blue sweater? Yeah. I don't care. Right. I just don't care. Yeah. And so I, I mean, I completely get the, having the vision. It's right. so true, yeah. But but having the I don't have the patience for it. Yeah. And but having the vision of the overall of the overall piece, right. I completely get that. That's the chair you got to sit in. <laughs> right. What about when you're on the set with a director that isn't as comfortable on a set as you are, and as a result, the process, you know, the the ten hours of work you guys might have to do that day is going to take fourteen. And it, it, does that ever just start to eat at you? And you're like, well, if I would just utilize all that I've absorbed, I, I, we might we might treat ourselves to a to a more efficient. Jason day. got into directing so that he could do scenes like whatever would get him back on the ten quickest. Yeah, exactly. And driving Let's collapse home, this coverage you know? <laughs> into a yeah. <laughs> Everybody just stand in a line. I'm going to shoot that. Is this setup going to put me on the 405? Because if it's not, <laughs> it's another one. <laughs> Listen, you also you underestimate Jason's appetite for discussing minutiae and arguing about <laughs> fucking just details and stuff that's meaningless. Oh my god. He, he can fucking talk about uh, shit that you're like, we already got it a half hour ago, idiot. And he's like, but listen, why would they, you know, you're like, shut the fuck But I mean, you know, if you think about it, uh, it's yeah. unreal. It's unreal. Yeah, no yeah. interest whatsoever. Here's the other problem with being a director, or that I I did, I actually I wrote directed and acted in two independent films. Yeah. So mm. I did it. I got it. I, I've been in the editing room. I completely get how there's, that's where you write your final draft. I can, all of that. But you wrap principal photography. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah. yeah. I'm as an actor. I'm done. Right. You are one third of the way through this thing. Yeah. yeah. And I, I just, I'm, I'm over it. I, I, that, that I learned that I'm going, oh my God, now I got to go promote it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that speaks to something interesting, Jeff. Do you like that? Well, you obviously you just said you you kind of like that that you're wrapped, but do you you have such a huge uh, um, you know resume? You've done so many films and television programs, etc. Do you love constantly kind of jumping into new things and going a completely different direction? Like your your stuff, the breadth of your work is crazy. Yeah, yeah. Comedy, huge. drama, indie, huge movies like theater. What is that about? I I, uh, I it's keeping me interested. To be honest, mm. uh, the pandemic uh, happened, and I, I was 65 when the pandemic happened. So it really was like forced retirement without the gold watch. Mm -hmm. You're just yeah. done. And this is what, oh, this is what retirement is like. I got mm. it. Okay. And then I, I came out of, well, in March, almost out of the pandemic, we hope, I went down to Pittsburgh, and we've just finished five months of shooting this Showtime series called American Rust. And mm -hmm. I was curious as to whether I'd still be in love with acting or wanted to do it. I was getting used to semi-retired and all that. And I missed it. Mm -hmm. I missed between action and cut. Mm -hmm. I miss, I miss even going back to Mockingbird, you know, on Broadway. I miss uh, what Atticus Finch is going to be able to do to this post-George Floyd crowd. Mm -hmm. um, acting is a kind of thing 
if just for me, um, if I just stay focused on acting, I can take 43 years of doing it and be better than I've ever been because right. it's cumulative, right? Yeah. We're not athletes. Our bodies don't deteriorate. Or if they do, play your age, which is right. also what I'm doing. Yeah, I'm still playing 20 to 25, yeah. Thank God for Sean. Well, that's your that's your choice. Yeah. Sean's deteriorating one toe at a time. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> the, the market thing was funny. The, uh, um, but I, I, I just, I'm still interested. Yeah. And, I, and I gotta be challenged. I gotta risk failure. I gotta, yeah. like... They're writing it for me, but I've never done this guy before. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go all in on that and see if I can pull it off. And I and if I do, I do. If I, and then I keep I'm I, I, whatever process I got is working, and, and it comes from newsroom. How do you know if you've pulled it off? Do you do you defer to the critics? I bet no. Is it for yourself? Like in other words, do you watch what you do, and when you see the final product or the dailies or playback or whatever, are you the barometer? Are you, are you the one that decides whether you've gone outside your skill set? If it's if you're doing too much acting, if you're staying within yourself, how do you know if you're pulling off a character? It's the work ethic. I had to work so hard on the first season of Newsroom, harder than I've ever had to work. You have to memorize mountains of dialogue, and then you got to spit it out at 100 miles an hour. That means you have to learn it so that you can do that the Sunday night before the entire week. Mm. You can't learn it in the makeup chair. You just can't. I've seen day players come in on newsroom, and they're trying to learn three pages of Sorkin in the makeup chair, and the flop sweat hits them. I mean, it's, it's, it's really, I've never seen it anywhere else. They, they, and we all go through it. I went through it on episode five. I got in, and I just couldn't keep a word of it in my head anymore. The computer's overloaded, and I literally took a knee in the middle of the newsroom and said, give me the line again, give me the line again. And she gave it to me three times. Couldn't say it. They sent me home. Wow. Oh, my God. We called it getting Sorkinized. You yeah. just <laughs> hit the wall. Uh -huh. And 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 everybody, everybody did it. I mean, I can go around the cast and go that day. Yeah, I remember when Allison, I remember when Tommy did it. All of us. Yeah. So I knew the amount of work that I had to put in to pull off Will McAvoy every fucking day. I'd love yeah. to see Jason do that because Jason's memorization is yeah. Is Jason's crazy. Off. He's the memorized. best of all. I think I'm good, but Jason's is the best of all time. But you know yeah, what though? Sure. I think that would be my kryptonite though. I wonder if I'd be any good at that to to memorize things word perfect. That's not the way I I, I do it. That's not the way I memorize. Many it. don't, and that's perfectly yeah. wonderful and fine. You know, it's just this was I had to do that. So I knew the amount of work I had to do to pull off season one of Newsroom. I took that work ethic. Are we gonna Are we gonna sag in in uh, I mean I won the Emmy for that yeah. that first season and only because I had that Northwestern speech. No, I don't think that's the only reason. <laughs> I think no. you're, well, yeah, I think you are amazing. That was you are that incredible. Was, that that was amazing. the episode that they submitted, and and literally I'm we're going to the Emmys and and HBO is saying, look, just enjoy the meal. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> and you're not going to win. Gandolfini never won the first two seasons, so just, just, just enjoy the night. Okay, all right. You're up against Spacey in House of Cards, and Damian Lewis in Homeland, and John Hamm in, in Mad Men, Brian in in uh, Breaking Bad. I mean, there was no way. Right. It was that speech, that Northwestern speech. I can't believe that Aaron wrote your speech for you too. Um, your acceptance speech. That's so crazy <laughs> that you had to do that perfectly as well. Yeah, that was, I think that's over the top. Yeah. Was, is that true? You had wow. to pay him 100000 for that? Yes. <laughs> we'll be right back. Hey, this episode's brought to you by Brooklinen. Not Brooklyn, but Brooklinen. You spend one third of your life sleeping. So you want to make your bed as comfortable as possible, right? But maybe you looked at some retailers and you calculated the years of interest you'd pay on just one set and then you gave up. Trust me, you go check out Brooklinen. Huh? Brooklinen was started to create beautiful, high quality home essentials that don't cost an arm and a leg. We're talking about buttery, soft, breathable sheets, plush, absorbent towels, cozy robes, comfy loungewear that you're going to want to put on and never take off. Huh? Brooklinen works directly with manufacturers to make luxury available directly to you without the luxury level mock-ups. So you get their amazing array of products at a reasonable price, huh? You get it. 
They are so confident in the core products that they come with a 365-day warranty. Huh? And fans are confident, too. They've received over 75,000-plus five-star reviews and counting. I use Brooklyn in products because I'm from Brooklyn. So give yourself the comfort refresh that you deserve and get it for less at Brooklinen. Go to brooklinen.com and use promo code SMARTLESS to get $20 off with a minimum purchase of $100. Okay? Sounds fair. That's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com and enter promo code SMARTLESS. Don't make me spell that for you. For $20 off with a minimum purchase of $100. That's brooklinen.com, promo code SMARTLESS. Now beat it. Today's program is brought to you by Athletic Greens, the health and wellness company that makes comprehensive daily nutrition simple. With so many stressors in life, it is difficult to maintain effective nutritional habits and give our bodies the nutrients it needs to thrive. AG1 by Athletic Greens, the category-leading superfood product, brings comprehensive and convenient daily nutrition to everybody. To help each of us be at our best, they simplify the path to better nutrition by giving you the one thing with all the best things. One tasty scoop of AG1 contains 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food source ingredients, including a multivitamin, multimineral, probiotic, green superfood blend, and more in one convenient daily serving. The special blend of high-quality bioavailable ingredients works together to fill the nutritional gaps in your diet, support energy and focus, aid with gut health and digestion, and support a healthy immune system. And it contains less than one gram of added sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, or artificial anything. And it still tastes great. So come on. I know you're picky and I know that you're a bit of a complainer, but this is going to work for you. It's super easy to do in the morning. I just do it first thing. I just throw one scoop in water or if, if I'm having a, a, a smoothie, I throw it in into that. And I know that I'm getting all that good stuff that I listed, all of it at once. Boom, I'm done. Athletic Greens is going to give you an immune supporting free one year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase if you visit athleticgreens.com slash smartless today. Again, simply visit athleticgreens.com slash smartless to take control of your health and give AG1 a try. Smartless is brought to you in part by KiwiCo. Now that summer is really, truly over, our minds are turning to fall and Halloween, which Ooh. naturally sparks creativity from the costumes we pick to the recipes we bake and the decor we put up. Yes, I love my favorite time of year. It's so good. So why don't you let KiwiCo foster that natural creative thinking and channel it into hands-on fun for your kids. And you guys can discover hands-on science and art projects you can get delivered to your door. KiwiCo delivers creativity made convenient for the entire family. I'm really excited. Sean, uh, because it is that time of year, that, that, like we just said, and KiwiCo has the uh, Halloween steam kit. The Halloween steam I'm kit, yeah. I'm so psyched to get into with my kids because I love these things. They're, they are so sort of uh, um, hands-on. You get into it. It's, it's like a it's like a whole experience. And I may come my, over and join you guys because that's how fun. You it should. Is. Yeah. You absolutely should. It's so good. So you, you get you, you cultivate your child's natural creativity and, and curiosity with new hands-on projects every month. So that they'll explore new worlds and rediscover familiar ones even without leaving home. So do your part to encourage your kids to be innovators and creative thinkers. They won't believe what they can build and accomplish with KiwiCo. Give them the tools to learn new skills, build new experiences, and make new connections to the broader world. Scare up some fun this Halloween with KiwiCo. Redefine learning with play. Explore hands-on projects that build confidence, creativity, and critical thinking skills. Get 50% off your first month plus free shipping on any crate line with code SMARTLESS at KiwiCo.com. That's 50% off your first month at KIWICO.com, promo code SMARTLESS. All right, back to the show. So, Jeff, I want to go back to, to Kill a Mockingbird with Aaron Sorkin on Broadway. Mm -hmm. It broke some box office record or something like that, right? The top sales yeah, of all a lot time of or them, something? Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, I, mean, I think of the top top 10 weekly grosses, we hold the top nine. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that wow. unbelievable? That's crazy. Yeah. And and do you guys, I don't know if I'm, this is a question to everybody, you know, because I come from theater, you come from theater, that's where it all starts, right? So do you remember when Bravo used to air 
operas and plays and things like PBS used to air, some great theater stuff, and people watched them all the time. As a kid, I used to watch them. Did they really? They Operas they used to put on? Yeah, Bravo? they used to do all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that, Jeff? Did you ever watch that? No, not specifically Bravo, but I did. I remember CBS Playhouse. Uh, oh yeah, or no, not that I. You know, I'm old, but not that old. But I remember seeing like Paul Newman as a young actor walking on to that a show of CBS Playhouse directed by Sidney Lumet. You know, wow. oh God, Ernest Borgnine as yeah. uh, um, Marty. You know, uh, th they would do stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I do know, and, and I'll I'll only use the Mockingbird experience is that it's different than watching the movie or reading the book. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and it's that you feel the play. Mm -hmm. For a year, eight shows a week, proudly went Cal Ripken Jr. and didn't miss a show for a That's year. Great. That's I great. Was, wow. I was on a mission. That's um, great. That's great. I remember doing God of Carnage with, with Gandolfini, Hope Davis, Marcia Gayhard, and oh, we were doing it, I don't know, seven months. And across the street was, uh, they were doing West Side Story, I think, and Arthur Lawrence, 92 years old, they had to bring Arthur in because the 20-somethings were getting drunk on Tuesday night and skipping the Wednesday matinee. Hmm. Huh. The actors, yeah. Yeah, the, and Arthur came in and read him the Riot Act. And, wow. and it's, there's just a thing. And Henry cool. Fonda did Mr. Roberts for... How many thousand performances, never mm -hmm. missed. I'm going, that's, I'm aiming at that. I'm just going to go old school on mm -hmm. that just to see if I could do it. The other thing, too, was to see if in the 10th and 11th and, yes, 12th month of this show, does it die? Yeah. Do, creatively, do you hit the wall and I can't repeat it and I can't do it anymore and I'm phoning it in? And I was happy to say that that did not happen we were performing surgery at 100 miles an hour. That was the time to see that show. It was, yeah. it was at its best Such because we success. knew it cold. Yeah. yeah, and we just kept it alive, which, it, which is the thing is, it's this listening and reacting, which is a form of improv. It's just against the script. And, and that's what we did. You don't know what he's going to say next. So wait to hear what he or she says and then use that. Half your performance is in the other actor. If you do all that stuff, you can keep it alive enough that you don't hit a wall with it. That's, that's that old thing that they say, like acting is, acting is reacting, or as Jason always says, acting is acting like you're reacting. But <laughs> Sean, aren't you, Sean, aren't you planning, aren't you doing Iceman Cometh on TikTok? Are you, yeah, are you planning I'm doing that? Soon? Yeah, and, and one minute, one minute bites. <laughs> oh, it's going to be so good. <laughs> um, one more, one more question in the weeds about that. Uh, just what you just said, um, you know, listening and then reacting. Isn't that at odds with the sort of mandate to do the style of the fast talking, don't take any gaps, pick up your cues, uh, order of the sort of Sorkinian or Mamet type of rhythm? I mean, isn't that at odds with hearing what the person just said, doing the proper acting of having that information process, formulate an opinion, construct an answer, then spit it out. All of that timing, certainly you need for comedy, but definitely in drama as well, that you're being asked to eliminate in the interest of just doing a speedy, this is the rhythm I, as the writer, want you to have. So it, it says, don't worry about your acting, service the rhythm of this writing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, Mamet wrote a book about that, which was, pissed me off because it was, you know, don't act, just say my words. Well, okay. <laughs> but I, here's what, Barnard Hughes was a great actor uh, when I was coming up in the 70s and 80s. And he was in a show called Da, won a Tony for it. And I think he was in Midnight, he was, he was in Midnight Cowboy as that guy that ends up with John Voight somewhere. Anyway, but I asked, Barney told me, and he goes, Say A, think B, then say C. That's one way to do it. Mm -hmm. If you want to move, say A, and as you're thinking B, say C. Mm -hmm. And so that that that's how you beat it. And and you know when she you're not you're the cue isn't the last two words of what he yeah. or she says. It's what they said in the middle. But sometimes it is. Sometimes you don't get the necessary information you need that lives in your response until the end of their last line. 
you know, like they don't, yes. a, a, you know, so it's, I mean, I, you know, we're, we're in the weeds yeah, here. But and, it's, and then here's, yeah. no, 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 no. And then here's what happens, Jason. Uh, that's how Aaron goes in because he doesn't want you bringing in all your thing. He wants you to do it the way he wrote it. Okay, great. Now you're doing episodes. Now you're into the first season. Maybe you're into the second and he trusts you. Now that pause that he wrote in there, you pitch. You're, I'm not doing that. I'm going right straight through, blah, 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 blah. He sees everything. He hears everything. Yeah. And now you're doing not only what Aaron did, and you're sticking to his words, that's the rule, but you're putting your own thing on it, which changes the way he does it. Because Aaron writes in front of a mirror. He he writes out loud. He plays mm -hmm. every part, which yeah. that's why you can, it, there's a sameness to it sometimes. Yeah. But but you you you're able to beat that by having me and Emily Mortar and Tom Sadowski and whomever else you know in in there doing it. It's different voices from the same voice. So gotcha. it, it's you know that it's it's it, it's tricky. But eventually they. Uh, somebody like Sorkin will will trust you to let you go. I mean, he never he never came to me and and gave me line readings or anything like that. Uh, anything we we do the line through the rehearsal was a line through at six thirty in the morning, sitting in the newsroom. He'd have all eight of us sitting around there, and I'd be off book. Mm -hmm. It's thirteen pages of Sorkin, and I'm standing there six thirty in the morning and. The first day, everybody's got their pages, and they're looking at their pages, and I'm just going around the room, and I know all 13 of them. And you're like, them. you guys are fucked. And, no, then, and then the next day, everybody, nobody had any pages. Yeah. It's just yeah. survival. On Sorkin, it's survival. How did, so you, I mean, this is, that's so intense, and what an intense experience, and uh, it takes up so much of your life. Did you ever have time especially then for, do you follow sports a lot? I see that you've got a lot of music behind, like instruments behind you. Like, what do you do to kind of, you know, unwind? Yeah, for the listener, he's, Jeff, you got like 75 guitars yeah, behind beautiful. you. Yeah, I know. It, we, I have a home recording studio that I really enjoy. I've always played guitar. I played it since the 70s. I never played out uh, in a club or anywhere. Uh, I started playing in the 70s. I played out maybe the first time in 2002. Wow. And I just played on the porch. I I was hanging around playwrights off Broadway in the seventies, and I, I I had never seen a living, breathing playwright before. I'm 21. I'm 22. I'm in New York. I'm at this theater company, and every single one of these playwrights, like Lanford Wilson, are rewriting a second act. It was a living, breathing thing. The writing. I, I, you know, in college, you just get a published script and the guy's either dead or I don't know. But that thrilled me. And so the writing thing interests me. Directing, like, it's, no. But the writing interested me. But I'm never going to get a play written and done on Broadway, so I'm going to pick up the guitar, get better at that. Oh, look, here's Doc Watson. Here's Steve Goodman. Here's Arlo Guthrie. Uh, now you're into the blues. Jonathan Edwards, Shanny, Funny. Christine Lavin writes funny, plays well. They stand there with an acoustic guitar on a stage for 100 minutes and they hold them. Mm -hmm. That's hard to do. And coming from musicals and high school and college, it was like I knew how to do that where suddenly you break into song. I would just write and write and write and throw them in a notebook and just get better at the guitar and finger picking and... Uh, and then eventually I had this theater company and we needed to raise money. So why don't we put you on stage with your guitar and we can sell tickets? And that's a whole other deal. Mm -hmm. I, I had flop sweat. Uh, to, <laughs> the, uh, and, and, and it took, it, it's like the first time you do Carson or Letterman or Leno or Steve or any of the guys, Fallon. Uh, you know, it's seven minutes and you got to score. Right. And uh, flop sweat happens, you know, when, when you're out there for the first time or two on that. So it was the same thing. But once I learned how to do it, mm. creatively, I controlled everything. There was yeah. nobody else telling me what to do, what to sing, what to say, what jokes were completely my own thing. And that was an escape. And so I just kept kept collecting the guitars. And, you know, I've got too many, but, you know, yeah, that better than cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> is your life as idyllic as it sounds right now? Can you get perspective yeah. on that? I mean, or, or does it just right. feel like yours? I mean, do you do you treat yourself to take a step back and 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 think, I'm happy, I'm healthy, I've I have a I've had a long career in an incredibly fickle 
uh, you know, profession. Um, and I've got this family and I'm, I'm living on a lake in Michigan. I, I, yeah, well, at the beginning you said, I love when you said, how do you know you've made it? Is it awards? Is it a claim? Is it money? It just yeah. feels like you've made you've it. You've made it, yeah. Jeff, We're here to tell it. you. You Congratulations. Yeah, and that's what the show's all well, about. It, it's very nice. <laughs> we let people know if, if, <laughs> if, if they should be happy or not. Yeah. You know what? You check out of the Ambition Hotel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You check out of the uh, where's that next thing? And I got to make more. And I got to do. Yeah. I got to get. I got to get in. How do I get nominated for that? I just it's it's sexy yeah. indifference. But there if you is. get to a certain point, you go. You know what? Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. I can live with that. Yeah. And if nothing else happened, and it really happened after Atticus on Broadway. That's where I felt that if it ended, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jeff, thank you so much for coming. Today. I really, truly meant what I said at the top. You are one of my all-time favorites. I just revere you. I think you're incredible. Thank you. I appreciate I agree. that, guys. Yeah. Same. Very yeah. nice of you to say yes to this, Jeff. You're a treasure. Thank you for coming. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you, Jeffrey. See ya. Thank you, Bye. buddy. Bye. See you, Jeff. See ya. Nice going, Sean. Yeah, really good, Sean. Really, really good. God, I love that I guy. I love him. I think he's great. You know, the thing that re- it really stuck with me, that's why I brought it up at the end, which was how do you know? When he said, how do you know you've made it? Is it is it a family? Is it the work? Is it the money? Is it, what is it? Is it the car you've always wanted? Is it, the, you know, it's really... Chicks. It's chicks. It's chicks, sorry. It's yeah. chicks, yeah, as yeah. many as you can. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's, I, I, I do, I, not to take this down into a, into a dark hole, but, you know, being past 50, uh, it's like, well, if I want to live to be 100, then I, I've got to admit that I'm on the second half. And you start to think about how am I doing with the years I've been given? Am I, mm-hmm. am I using them well? Because eventually you're going to be inside that last year or last 10 years or whatever, and you're going to start to think back. Yeah. And at that point, it's going to be too late to yeah. change what you've done with the time you've been given. And, and it's all of those things, right? I, I always, I, yeah, I think all the, first of all, two things. One is I remember one time, this is years ago, thinking about this, there's a guy that I used to, really look up to as a sort of comedic actor and he was amazing and I'm not going to name his name but thank you, uh, thank you. Uh, and I remember thinking like he you could is tell that he is thought it, is that it Gallagher? he, tell no, me he Gallagher. <laughs> you could tell that he thought that he had made it you could tell that he thought he was funny and I thought I always think about this the moment that you think that you've got it is the moment that you've lost it yeah, yeah. and so you percent. always have to stay you, you always have to sort of stay humble and I know it's people are gonna be like, yeah nice try asshole actor as they're driving or walking or whatever it's true you always have and you never have to never think about yourself in the third person never also I remember hearing somebody say never use the words my and career next to each other like don't talk about and I try not to think about myself in that way I try to my only responsibility in and I'll go even further down this road is mm-hmm. I always feel like my only responsibility every day is to be happy and look for joy wherever I can and focus on the things that work. And if I do that, if I look for that kind of stuff in everyday life, you know, we, we all have things that don't work in our lives, but if 95% of the, the stuff is working, why focus on the 5% that's not? And for me, that's what I try to do on a daily basis. Again, not to get too, yeah. I just wish you'd stop looking at donuts to make you happy. Yeah. They're not making you happy. Okay? And you know what? <laughs> so good. It's fried dough. Sean thinks that that's wonderful. Sean thinks that that's a wonderful oh, Third person. sentiment. Oh, no. And Sean's ready to wrap this up. And yeah, you know Sean, what Sean's thinking well, we of can right tell now. Sean. Sean's You're thinking, thinking of a way to braid in the word by, aren't you? You're trying to back Listener, into it. No. That's all you think about. When, no, as soon I as the guest goes away, you just try to yeah. win the by contest. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're not listening to what we're saying. You're no, like I am Googling listening. things. Ryan's I am by. listening, I, but I have to go bye, bye. I have to go pee pee, bye, bye. Oh. Um, I have to make a potty. I mean, well, that was like, I mean. You can't go. You can't go until no, you we can't. come up with a worthwhile <laughs> what, a, what a fucking surrender that was. That, that was like the worst. so bad. <laughs> Listen, if there was any show that you could do on Broadway, Sean, because, you know, all this talk about Broadway, would it be, bye, bye, bye birdie. birdie. <laughs> 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 bye, bye. That'll do. Smart. Smartless is 100% organic and artisanally handcrafted by Rob Armjarf, Bennett Barbaco, and Michael Granteri. 
The next episode will be out in a week wherever you listen to podcasts or you can listen to it right now early and ad-free on Amazon Music or by subscribing to Wondery Plus in the Wondery app. Smart. Less.